Well, hello everyone, and just a little note before we start tonight's episode of Everlasting Summer. First off, this was recorded in front of a live studio audience, so in other words, it was recorded during a live stream, so I will be responding to people's comments, and the comments will be shown in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. A little departure from normally for the series, but it was fun. The other thing is, I want to give everyone a little bit of fair warning. Now, we started off down the Lena Goodroot ending, which uh, you will see an ending in this episode, but unfortunately, the walkthrough I copied the steps from from this one uh, missed an important step, so we ended up with the Lena bad ending. And I just wanted to warn people: we this will be talking about suicide in a fairly graphic manner. And if this is going to bother you or disturb you in any way, I would much, much rather you steered clear of this particular episode and gave me a week to prepare the happier Lena Good Ending and watch that one instead. Or if you are going to watch this, watch that one instead anyway. But anyway, on with the show. We're playing this. And we want to look for her. So tonight we are going to see if we can get the lovely Lena's hearts. Alright. Now what we need to do is we need to do nine things during the course of the game. Okay, and those nine things are those. Okay, so if we get all of those nine points, we get Lena. It's as simple as that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, going to, I'm just going to start the game off and I'll narrate the first bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to speed through until we get, actually get to these decisions and we'll slow down a little bit and take those and any new text we run into I will narrate and we'll do the storyline properly and what I'm hoping is that we'll actually get two lots of storyline out of this. This one first and then see if we can do the uh, the Lena bad ending which I think you still get Lena but it's not as good so all right if everyone likes that idea if we get this done in time there's a couple other things I would like to play tonight so uh, hopefully this will be fun but in the meantime let's get on shall we okay so back and we're gonna start a new game And we'll take it from there. So how's everyone? I was having that dream once again. That dream. Same thing every night. But it's all forgotten about in the morning as usual. Maybe it's for the best. Only a glimpse of memory will remain, of gates half opened as if inviting me somewhere, with two frozen stone pioneers standing close by. And also, that strange girl, who keeps asking me. Will you come with me? Come? No, I'm just walking funny. But where? And why? Where am I anyway? Of course, if it all happened in real life, I certainly would have been scared. Well, what else would one expect to feel? But this... This is just a dream. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Chelsea. The same one I see every night. There must be a reason. You don't have to know where or why to realize. Something is really happening. Something desperately seeking my attention. Since everything that surrounds me here is real. As real as things in my own flat, I could open the gates, hear the inches creak, brush the crumbling rust away with my hand, inhale the fresh, cool air, and shiver from the cold. I could, but to do that I would need to pick myself up, take a step, move my hand. But this is a dream. I understand that. But what of it? What does my understanding change? Because here it's just like 
on the other side of the, of the cracked screen of an old TV, which struggles to fight against the static noise and strives to show its audience everything without missing a single detail. I am fine, thank you for asking. But the picture is blurry, and in this game, I'm Yulana. I must be waking up soon. Maybe I should ask her something. The girl. What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? I'd rather ask about the gates. Yes, the gates. She would be so surprised. Or better, why not? Why the dot over the I is called a tittle? But the dot over J is called a superscript dot. Nice letters. As if they don't exist any wrong. Still, what do letters, gates and stars have to do with this place? Because even if I am having this dream every night, which will be forgotten soon anyway, I've got to look for answers here and now. And there, if you look carefully, you can see the Magellanic Clouds as if I'd ended up in the Southern Hemisphere. In a dream, there are small things that catch your attention. An, un an unnatural colour of grass, impossible curves of straight lines, or your own distorted reflection. While the real danger, which could put an end to everything right here and now, seems trivial. It's natural since here, you cannot die. I know it for sure. I've done it hundreds of times. But if you cannot die, is there a point in living? I should ask the girl. She's a local. She should know. Yes. Exactly. Yes, I should ask her about the owl, for example. One strange bird it is, though it doesn't matter. Will you come with me? And every time I have to answer, it's the only way, otherwise the dream will never end and I will never wake up. Okay, we'll go with her. Every time it's so hard to decide on the answer. Where am I? What am I doing here? Who is she? And why does so much of my life depend upon this answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It's just a dream, after all. Just a dream. Ah, here we go. Let's back up a little bit. There we go. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I had a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl, not Russell, reading a book. Lena. I decided to move closer and talk. She was the only new person I'd met here without even exchanging a few words. Hi, what are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She blushed and stared at the book again. So, what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. So, we need to praise the book. Just bring these up again here. Okay, so we praise Lena's book. Praise book. A good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but... I think that such literature suits her very well. Lena didn't seem to be interested in continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you... No, she answered while still looking at the book. Can I sit beside you for a while? Why? And really, why? Maybe because, it was, I, because I was very tired and having company is better than being alone. And maybe I wanted to try to find something out from her. I carefully examined Lena. But no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed to. Feel free. But if I'm bothering you, 
No, you're not. I can leave. Just say. Everything's alright. Try Lena Bad. Says Lena the best. No, I wonder which girl you prefer. Everything's alright. Okay then. I sat on the edge of the bench, carefully. After such an intense talk, staying here was the last thing I wanted to do, but it wouldn't be nice just to stand up and leave, is it? That didn't really go well, huh? Lena hasn't answered anything. It seems I made a fool out of myself. I bet if Yolanda was here, she'd have a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? I recalled Slavia's question and thought it would be a good start for a conversation. Yes. She smiled slightly. I guess I like it here too. Lena definitely isn't very sociable and probably can't carry on a meaningless conversation as easily as Slavia. But there is something about her that attracted attention. Like a momentary glimpse of a reflection of the glass on a rainy autumn evening, which makes you turn around and stare into darkness, searching for something that you saw at the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it was, but it felt so tempting. Lena was still reading the book without paying attention to my presence. I had no intention, and I had no intention of asking her anything about this camp or this world in general. Beautiful night. Yes. How in a world? How in a world would you start a conversation with her? It's late. I have to go. Yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There was something strange about this girl. Okay, right, let's look. What's the next one we have to get? The next question is, we need to lose the tournament against Lena. Oh, so let's skip on to that, shall we? Samian, you're late. Right, so here we are at the card game. Dear. Okay, so I don't think this one has an effect on the game. No, we just need to lose against Lena. So we bet last time, we'll bet this time. Okay, so Oh, well that's easy. We we okay, right. Does anyone mind if I do this? I'll just skip the tournament and lose against Lena. Okay, let's do it. So we're just going to lose against Lena. There we go. It's still frustrating to lose anyway. I left the canteen. It's still too early to sleep and a short walk looked like a good idea. Where should I head to? Well, we uh, need to go to the football field after losing. Don't know what happened there. Just lost the game for a second. Okay, so... Right, we can go to the football field, beach, jet, square, to scene, bus stop or boathouse. We know we need to go to the football field, so let's go there. It's certainly too late for football, and so the pitch was empty. I spent a couple of minutes there listening to the silence without any luck and then headed back. Okay, sorry, but I promised Lena... I'm sure that Lena wouldn't mind if I sat next to her. Hold on. Wait a second. Sorry, maybe later. I gently loosened my sleeve from her grasp and headed to the farthest corner of the canteen. Genio was shouting something in my direction, but I tried to ignore her. Hi. Good morning. Having heard the librarian shouting, Lena had been stealing glances at me for a while. Good morning. Strangely enough, she didn't blush, but smiled instead. Would you mind if I join you? I'll get my meal and be back in no time. Yes, sure. We'll pick this up in a second. Ooh. Good lord, all of my fantasies at once. Okay, I'll come. 
I think that's probably help Lena. Okay, I'll come. Let's go. Yep. Nice. That's how a true pioneer should answer. Even after those words, I barely came a step closer to the be prepared, always prepared motto. Then you can go. I looked at Lena, who was still staring at the ground. I guess all that that time she spent staring at the ground was enough to learn everything there was to know about the life and habits of different insects. Oh dear. Put it away, boy. Put it away. I was awoken by the noise of the door opening. Lena stood at the door. The nurse isn't here. Then I'll come back later. I'm substituting for her. Since I'm responsible for Pioneer's lives, I should do it with the full responsibility. Although, in fact, I was just afraid of something bad happening because of me. Any health complaints? Quick, take off your clothes and lie on the bed. Let me examine you. I gave Lena the most professional smile I could in order not to confuse her. Nothing special. Just a little headache. Let's do this. You hold Yolanda down and I'll shoot her. Some painkillers, maybe. Of course, I wasn't aware where to find the required medicines, so it took me a while to find them. Finally! I handed a metamizole tablet to Lena. Thanks. She smiled. That was completely unexpected. I lost touch with reality staring at her. What? Lena turned awkward in an instant. Listen, I've been wondering, do you like this? I don't know what got into me, but I grabbed the magazine from the table and showed her that picture of the skirt and a cardigan, which would really suit Lena, in my opinion. Maybe I went completely nuts about the, the, all the girls being in my world. Or maybe I wanted to distract myself instead of just waiting for the nurse to come back. Lena looked at the picture. Yes, I guess. Is stuff like this in fashion? I guess. She got confused and started blushing. Why did you ask? Really, why? I think you would look gorgeous in it. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. It's Psycho Shurik. Okay, so now we need to tell her that we went on our own. Same, yeah. She started to talk sadly. Where have you been? Well, I... Prepared for a scolding, I didn't expect that reaction. I went to look for Shurik. Alone? Yes, alone. Yes, alone. So, what about Shurik? Right, so that's that one. Actually, let's just check again. What's the next step? Connect stories with Lena, and then that's in the next day. Okay, so we head out over the island. I think we've done about 15 episodes so far. And we go with Lena. Let's go with you. Let's go. Okay. Right. Try to find out what Elisa and Lena are arguing about. Only Lena and Lisa stood out in all this splendor. Well, of course, it was quite natural for Elisa to be arguing with someone like that. But hearing Lena talk in a raised voice, I came closer silently, trying to find out what was going on. No, you listen to me. I'm not going to listen to anything. Really? Great then. Elisa turned away and her eyes met mine. At first, she obviously was confused about what was going on, but then... So, you're eavesdropping. What? Me? No, I, I never drop no eaves, Mr. Gandalf, sir. She slowly began she began slowly advancing on me and I took a few steps back. Lena, however, remained standing where she was. Well, okay, listen. Elisa stopped halfway and turned back to Lena. By the way, 
did you know that he was peeping on me today? What? Peeping, and he saw everything. Is that... is that true? Lena wrung her hands distressedly, gave me a quick glance, and started staring at the ground as she, she was cut off from the world. No, no, nothing like that happened. Having thrown an angry glance at Le Elisa, I came up to Lena. Are you, why are you denying it? I even have a witness. Your witness is even worse than you. So, you'll stick to your claim that it didn't happen. I took a second to think. But really, why do I have such a pathological desire to exonerate myself before Lena? As though I vitally need it, I need her opinion of me to remain unchanged. Though, how would I know what she's thinking? It didn't happen. Lena threw a baleful look at Elisa and, ra and raised her eyes at me right after that, eyes full of discomfort and hope. It suddenly became unbearable to stare into those eyes. It didn't happen. I repeated less confidently. Well, whatever. Elisa sneered from behind me. It's up to you to decide who to trust. She said to Lena offhandedly and then turned away and headed to the bonfire. Is that true? I felt uncomfortable, like a fish out of water, feeling the urge to end this as fast as possible. And why should I have to excuse myself to her? Well, so what if it did happen? I looked at Lena boldly, but noticed only a bright sunset gleam reflected in a tear which was going down her cheek. No, I meant... You don't need to lie. She wiped her tears off and tried to smile. After all, it's none of my business. No, why isn't it? But why is it? It's just that I, well, it was an accident, get it? An accident which was caused by you, Lana, nothing more. Yes, sure. It's true. I believe you. Lena was saying everything with absolutely no emotion, like she didn't care about what was going on. I was almost able to believe it, but her tears a few seconds ago. It seems to me that you don't. What is this, some kind of game? Lena said quietly, but there was a hint of anger in her tone. You really need to convince me of that? And even if I believed you, what then? Would it all become true? I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I just want you to understand that I'm not guilty. And that I didn't want to. Why should I care at all? Lena shouted. I was standing with my back to the bonfire, but I was sure that all the pioneers had turned in our direction. If you want to peep at someone, do it! Do whatever you want! But why do you bother me? I'm not. But really, from any point of view, it looked that way. I'm trying to excuse myself to Lena with no success. Like a guilty child, or maybe even like a husband who'd slipped up. Just so you know, I don't care! Lena turned away and headed back into the camp at a fast walk. Uh, why did I stream on Wednesday? My computer went completely foobar and I had to rebuild it twice. And then I needed some time to make sure it was working before spending four hours streaming. <sighs> I didn't try to stop her. Now it certainly wasn't the best solution. She's on edge. No attempts to convince her or appeal to her reason would help. Since when is she like that? Screaming that way, getting mad. With all these thoughts in mind, I returned to the bonfire and sat down on the wooden log. Okay, now we need to help Elisa. So? Elisa asked after seating herself nearby. What? Not a great success, huh? Uh, as you see. I growled out while picking at the coals with a stick. It grew completely dark and the glade was plunged into darkness. The surrounding landscape was reminiscent of a picture from a child's book about a wood monster. An unknown forest creature is just about to spring out from behind the tree. Predatory owls hoot menacingly in tree branches. Even mice looking out from snags stare at you with distrust. I was not afraid at that moment. Everything was different from the previous day when I was in the dungeon of the old camp. The moon was shining brightly, paying close attention to our brave troop. The world was sleeping, 
waiting for the moment, bathing in the moonlight. As I thought, though it was expected. But why? I finally managed to pick up the largest burning log and throw it into the centre of fire, causing the flames to rise about a metre high, and a vortex of sparks spread out in all directions. Does Lena often behave like that? How? Screaming at others. I couldn't believe she would act in such a way. She is human like everyone else. Alyssa giggled. As if you hadn't noticed this before. What hadn't I noticed? Her. What do you mean? I mean, this is her true face. What do you mean, true face? Oh, you're so stupid. Finish what you started. She's not what she seems like, not how you thought of her before. So how is she? Okay, I'm sick of this. Alyssa stood up, intending to leave. I didn't say anything, just sat and listened to the silence of the forest. By the way, if you want to follow her, I think she's on the island. On what island? The one where you were gathering strawberries today. And what is she doing there? Ugh, you really are an idiot. Which is fairly true. Elisa stomped the ground, circled the campfire and sat opposite. I really must, I must have really lost track of things. My head was absolutely blank. To be precise, it was so heavy and full that not even a single idea would have the chance to dwell there. If I could compare my brain at its prime to a broad highway full of speeding thoughts and overtaking each other and causing giant chaotic crashes, then now it's nothing but a forgotten tiny path on a distant, desolate forest, which is only used in times of absolute necessity. I tried to think over what had happened, to analyse it somehow, but it seemed I was bashing my head against an invisible wall. Moreover, it was impossible for me to find a single emotion in my soul, any response, as if it had all happened to someone else. I failed to convince Lena that I'm not guilty. Should I care? Lena cried, screamed, and then left. So what? I didn't feel anything about it. Should I? I bit my lip until it bled and stood up. I couldn't hear her st I couldn't bear to stay here amongst these laughing pioneers. I should run away, it doesn't matter where to, to the forest, to the mine, even to space, I don't care, just as long as I can get far away from here. I seized a moment when the camp leader was looking in another direction and vanished into the forest shadows. There has been no rain for a long time. However, I'm not sure it rains here at all. What a stupid idea. Of course it does. The plants need some moisture. The night was fresher than the afternoon, but the air still hadn't enough time to cool. I was a little dizzy from the evening stuffiness. Suddenly I realised that I really wanted to swim. It was quite a normal desire because the days are hot and you constantly feel soaked with sweat during the daytime. I didn't even notice that I'd been approaching the pier. Why not the beach? Thoughts of Lena came over me again. Everything that I thought, tried to ignore came out and brought lots of inconvenient questions, inappropriate answers and vague desires. It was obvious that I'd been led to the pier by my subconscious. But what do I really want? To apologise to her for something, to convince her of something. No, unlikely. I just wanted to get some sort of reaction from her, I wanted to say yes. I understand everything and just smile. And then I could stop myself from feeling like that. It was necessary for me to be understood by someone even in this world. I untied a boat, pushed into the water, got in and took up the paddles. It was easier to row this time. My hands were still hurting, but I managed to develop some sort of technique that allowed me to travel quite directly. The river seemed frozen, spreading under the boat like a translucent veil. The moonlight was piercing deep into the water, so it was almost impossible to see the bottom. I started rowing. Surprisingly, the island seemed the same as it did in the daytime. Here, usually everything is different. After dusk, it felt like another world, a mystery world, scary at times, but beautiful in its own way. A world of shadows and whispers, a nocturnal world. I slowly walked around the island looking for a boat which Lena took to come here. The grass softly rustled under my feet. 
The occasional waves peacefully struck the shore and bounced back like flies too tired from beating on the glass. The breeze from the water lazily stirred the leaves of the trees, out of habit rather than a real desire to make the night grove seen. I looked at this wonderful picture with such delight I didn't even notice something until I stumbled into it. It was a boat. Well, of course, she wouldn't get here by swimming. Yes, because it's such a long distance, isn't it? I headed towards the centre of the island. After a hundred metres I heard a rustling behind a tree. Don't come any closer, Lena whispered. I hesitated. Don't come any closer, she said louder. How did you know it's me? Though she hadn't indicated that she'd known that. All right. I leaned against the tree, trying not to look behind it. Elisa told me that you would be here. So what? It was difficult for me to know what emotions Lena was experiencing. Her voice was steady enough, even though I could read the irritation and annoyance in it. I could not understand whether she was angry or whether it was all the same to her. That came out awkward. I was doing my best to avoid unnecessary apologies and excuses, but couldn't find other words to use instead. Was that the only reason you came? Well, no. Well, I don't know. You don't know, but you still came? Yes. You shouldn't have. Why? Of course, if I'm bothering you. Why are you following me? I... She was right. It certainly looked that way. Moreover, I definitely felt attracted to her. You shouldn't think like this. How should I think? I don't know. I can only draw a conclusion based upon your behaviour. I really don't know. I guess I'd, I guess I'd better go. I was confused, and it was hard just to be near her. Why, since you came? It, I seemed to hear a playful tone in her voice. All right. And? What? What did Elisa tell you? Nothing special. I see. Yeah. Well then. Yep. We just stayed silent for a while. Since you came, tell me about something. Well, I don't know. For example... Oh, sorry, wrong voice. For example, what about what, about what happened this morning? Leave Audia's brain shut down. I feel so sorry for you. What about what happened this morning? You know... You yourself didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to, but now I want to. Lena's voice trembled. I couldn't understand what was happening at all anymore. Maybe it's not her behind the tree. Don't look! Okay, okay, but what's wrong? Nothing. Just don't look. Alright. As you wish. So, nothing happened? Well, something did, but it was just a silly accident. Then why are you so worried about what I think about it? I'm not worried. And anyway, you yourself. I said louder, beginning to feel irritated. What about me? Why are you so concerned about this situation? Who said that I'm concerned about this situation? Then what? Nothing. She said in a whisper and fell silent. Such talk would lead us nowhere. Lena won't say anything and I seem to be too stupid to guess. Or even just to be sure about myself. Sorry, I guess it's all my fault. I just couldn't understand. Why? What? Why do you keep apologising for everything, for what you did, for what you're doing, for even what you haven't done yet? But... Maybe she was right, but I couldn't behave differently. I felt the need to apologise to her. To everyone. So they would not think badly of me, wouldn't laugh at me, so I could put away something I said and eliminate misunderstandings. Anyway, it's that your business. Lena got angry. Apologise. Make excuses. Why should I care? Okay then. I'm not guilty. In fact, I don't think I could be blamed for anything. But then what's wrong? What is wrong with you? Why would something be wrong with me? I don't know. I just think so. Oh, you just think so. She laughed. You speak as if you know me. I did not answer. Please leave. Lena said after a while. 
I didn't move. I just could not. I had no strength to do so. I wanted nothing at that point. I didn't want to excuse myself, to apologise. I didn't even want her understanding. I was too tired of everything. Why? Just leave, she whispered. I don't want to. Then I'll leave. Let's just go together. No. How long are you going to be offended? By what? What's wrong with you? Everyone here behaves normally except you. I did not care what my words meant, as if they had been said by someone else, and the topic of conversation meant nothing. You really don't understand anything. Alyssa was right. About what? Never mind. I closed my eyes to think it over. No, I can't go. I don't understand. Don't know what to think, what to do. And since when did I stop worrying about my situation in this world, or how to get back? Since when was the only thing I could think about Lena, or how others would look at me, or how my actions looked from the other side? It's just stupid, and it's not like me, in fact, it's inappropriate in this situation. In short, I didn't do anything, and I don't intend to justify things which I didn't do. There was no reply. Hey, do you hear me? I finally decided to see who was actually hiding behind the tree, but no one was there. So she left. I rushed over to Lena's boat, but she was already far away, almost near the pier. <sighs> Whatever. I shouted and walked along the shore. I got back relatively quickly and without much trouble. However, my hands still ached terribly and my eyes were closing themselves. Probably such physical and more importantly emotional load is too much for one person. I walked slowly towards the camp leader's cabin, staring at my feet and thinking about nothing. Someone called me at the square. Hey! Elisa ran up to me. Have you been to the island? Yes. To tell the truth, I didn't want to talk to her about anything, but I really didn't have the strength to lie to her. And how did it go? Doesn't matter. I'm very tired and I'm going to sleep. Come on, tell me. Her face had a nasty grimace, and I shuddered with rage. Why should you care? Well, I just... She murmured with dismay. Mind your own business! I snapped and quickly and quickened my pace towards the cabins. Elisa did not try to stop me. Annoyingly, Olga had not returned yet, and I could not find my key. What if I lost it? The only thing I could do was wait... I plopped down in the deck chair and closed my eyes. My heart was heavy and my soul was being torn apart by vague expectations. From time to time I had a feeling that I was already dead, just without realising it, and had been thrown into hell. But really, instead of trying to get out of here, I'm spinning in a, on a diabolical roundabout that goes faster and faster. I'm becoming more and more involved in the life of this world, of this camp. As if I had no past life. The real one. As if I was always interested in the opinions of others. Damn it! I never cared about it. Why right here? Why right now? I recalled the face of Lena in tears. Yeah. Probably not the opinions of others, but the opinion was the, oh, the one I cared about. I heard footsteps, and after a while, Olga appeared. She looked at me for a few seconds and seemed like she was about to say something and then just sighed, opened the door with her key and went in. I followed her. Shapeless shadows, blurry memories, fragments of feelings and emotions swirled in my head for a long time. For so long that after a while I couldn't tell where I was or what was happening to me. The only salvation was sleep 